But can you hear me over all these voices? So many voices trapped in glass. Once I came here early, all night I had not slept. The streets were deserted, only an old woman smoking her pipe in a corner of the square, only an infant crying in a high room. You can imagine how the palace looked rising over the garden. The guard who knew me let me in, silent. The great elms so still they were like reproductions. Alone I walked among the machines. Only my shadow moved among the shadows. I was in the hall of statues when a sound of rain started in all the galleries. Somewhere a warden had turned the fountains on. At once a longing for sleep opened in me, like a door into that room where I slept as a child, where all night it rained, all night dark poured onto the glass like rain. The guard touched my shoulder. No time for that, he said, the visitors are waiting. Was that when we first met? And now how late it is. Look, the windows are starting to work as mirrors. Do you see our reflections out there in the park? How they swoop and dart each time we turn our heads? How free they look. Like bats among a flurry of insects, among insects rising to a green smell of rain. Uh, I worked on the poem for a long time, actually, and I was working on it in my mind. And I was working on it over summer and traveling around to different places. And so I had this experience where I had this image of a palace being built in my mind when I worked on the poems. But I was also in all these various different places. So it seemed to me I was between two places, as it were. And I was interested in that and the Crystal Palace because of a remark of Lisa Harms, the curator's where she said that all museum displays now draw on how the Crystal Palace was, the way it set up the displays and gathered things and made them relics. And I wanted to create, therefore, that sense of the past in the present or this other world. I was, I was thinking very much when I was writing it about colonization and its suffering and also about the wars that came after this. And it seemed to me that the desire to possess things was used and even corrupted by that desire to take possession of whole empires. And so they were brought into the space of the museum as though they were things that people could own. Um, and then they were supplemented by things that people could buy and exchange. So I was interested in the way it made a sort of theatre of possession. Um, I suppose I hope that people take away the experience of being between two worlds, so that they're in the gallery itself, but also seeing before them this beautiful palace that doesn't exist. So that um, I it becomes an image in itself that would encapsulate that sense of the presence of the past.